Welcome to Unshakable with Human Design, the show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs use human design to shift from hustle to flow without sacrificing results. Come here to become an unshakable human and build an unshakable business according to your human design. I'm your host, Nicole Lano. Hello and welcome to Unshakable with Human Design, everybody. I'm your host, Nicole Leno, and I am so excited to be here with a friend today. This is a woman that I have come to know over the last couple of years. She's actually been a guest on the show. She did a human design reading. She won a human design reading on the show. Mm -hmm. So you've actually heard from her before. She is a 5-1 generator, 5-1 pure generator, and she is the founder of Spiritual Mixtape, which is also the name of her podcast which is also being featured on British Airways at the moment. She's a former entertainment industry executive, and she's turned her experience with corporate burnout into a mission to help others reclaim their well-being through breathwork, meditation, and stress management. And she's a leading voice in holistic wellness, empowering individuals to unlock their potential and live more fulfilling lives. Daisy Mack, welcome back (laughs) to the show. How are you? Oh, I'm so well, and I'm really happy to be here. It's lovely to see your face and be on your podcast. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you here. I'm so excited to talk to you because I watch your content. We've obviously known each other for a while, and I watch your content, and I think what you've been sharing lately definitely drew me in. And I was like, we have to have a conversation because I feel like you and I do different things, but we have the same sort of mission. There's a core mission that we both have, and we're both 5'1", so there's that. (laughs) I think that there's sort of this pull to help when you're in that transpersonal profile. There's this pull to help others. It feels like, well, I'm not here just for me. There's something that I'm supposed to give. And tell everybody a little bit about you. Tell everybody what you do and who you work with so they get a sense of who Daisy is and and a little bit about what we'll be talking about today. So primarily I teach breathwork, which is a wild revelation and definitely wasn't planned. I teach what I understand helps me. And I'm crazy passionate about breath work. Right now, I only sell a full package, like four sessions with me, because I know that if I commit and the other person commits, we can get to the place that they need to within four sessions. And it's lovely when people want to work with you on a regular basis and stay and have you as their trainer. But the power of breath is so magnificent and so incredible. And I know that you're paying for a session with me, but really your breath is free and that blows my mind as well. You're completely in control of this and you don't need to run a marathon. It's just in your body and it changes everything. It's really a secret key, but we're doing it all the time, every day, and no one knows. So who do I work with? I tend to work. So this is funny because my podcast is 50-50 men to women, but my actual client base is women. Mm -hmm. We love to seek out feeling better and change. We are better at asking for help and nurturing one another. So my client base tends to be women, tends to be professional. They're all over the world, which is beautiful. I have clients in South Africa, Australia, here in the States, at home in the UK. And I would say I love working with younger women, but my client base does tend to be over 35. I do work with a lot of women who are figuring out their love lives and their careers in their 50s, because really we're one of the first generations to, or like first moment in time where this is, not only do we need to work, but we actually have the ability to be in the workplace at 50, (laughs) which I know that there's probably women under 30 that are like, what, how? But when I was going through my career in my 20s, it was very rare to see a woman in any role over 50 in the sort of corporate environments that I was in. So this is a new time. And I love that women are leaning into these practices to keep themselves grounded, find clarity, stay whole. So yeah, women in business, it can be for themselves or it could be in a big company. And that tends to be my people. And what I wanted, I called you on the show because, like I said, we have similar missions. I think that we're here to help the people who come to us and feel drawn to our work. We're here to help you live a life that feels clean, that feels free. And I've also just come to realize and honor the fact that that's going to look very different for everybody. But there is a process that you can follow. There are tools that you can employ that a well-regulated nervous system is priceless. 
you know. I mean, it's the biggest teaching point for breath work. It's really the number one way that it works because when people come into breath work, it does feel quite magical. Even if you don't believe in angels and spirits and something beyond, you get to a place about 10 minutes in where all the parts of your brain are switching on and it honestly feels like you've got all of your ancestors, a choir of angels giving you the best advice and you're actually in a position to hear and understand everything. And really what's happening in that moment is your nervous system has gone from the stress response or from, in my case, freeze, fight, flight or freeze. And within seven to 10 minutes of breathing continuously and breathing with your diaphragm is really the magic. You switch into rest and digest. And at that point, your brain, it's not that all of your brain's on all of the time. It's just you live in the left side, which is your logical problem solver. It's the version of you that gets through your to-do list and bless that version of you for being there and remembering to take the laundry out of the washing machine, remembers to pick the kids up, remembers to reply to that email at the end of the day. If you have such a long to-do list, you are literally never moving into the other side of the brain. Mm. And the choir of angels, and the ancestors, your granny who died when you were eight, who's suddenly talking to you in your head. <laughs> all of that is just your right side of the brain. It just never gets to be on because you are so focused on the immediate, on the urgent. That intuitive, and from a human design perspective, I'll talk about this. You've all heard me on this show talk about EFT and how I use that to kind of decondition and go into deep deconditioning. But I also use breath work and I do breath work every day. I do your breath works all the time. I do breath work every day because as a coach, the world that I live in and what I do, I have to be grounded. I have to be open and I have to be clear in order to hold people, in order to do my job well. So there's a professional aspect to this, but it started out from a very personal place of just feeling like I was on edge all the time. There's always this like undercurrent of worry. There was always this kinetic reactionary sort of feeling in my body which I came to realize was me actually being out of my body, that I wasn't really in it. I have a laundry list of healing modalities that I have been through, but nothing knocked me into my body the way that breathwork did. And it starts out, to me at least, and I don't know if this is your experience with it, but it starts out as this huge clean out. Breathwork was like an exorcism where just all of the stuff that I had stored in my body. And when I think about a visual for that, it was almost like there was so much old stuff taking up space in my body that there was no room for my soul to be there. That's why I was sitting above my body and outside of it. There's all of this shit that I've packed in and haven't let go of that was squeezing the real me out of it. So I'm operating from this really disconnected place where I'm not in my body. And breath work created that space. And now it's a matter of maintaining the space. Yeah, you have to maintain. This isn't like a one and done situation. And it is detoxifying, which is some of the reason why people give up before Mm. they get to the good bit. And that's also why it's useful to either be breathing in a community or working with someone as you go through the beginning stages, because it really is purifying the body. One of the greatest things I was taught, I was having an energy treatment when I was in the Maldives with a South Indian healer. And we were talking about breath work and he was helping to remove some energy, some stuck energy from my body. And he was saying to me, well, your diaphragm's really clean, but you've got some stuff in your hips. And I was like, wait, 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 go back to the diaphragm. Talk to me about the diaphragm. And he explained to me that in Ayurvedic traditions, daily stress sits in the diaphragm until you breathe deep and release it. But obviously, if you don't breathe deep, and you just stay breathing from the top of your chest, all of that pressure in the diaphragm, all of that stress, because stress has to go somewhere. It's an electrical pulse in the body or it's cortisol. It's a hormone in the body, however you want to understand or however your body processes stress. It's a process. It's a system. And if you don't clean it out, it just sits somewhere, literally doing nothing but causing tension in your muscles or however you store stress. So with the diaphragm, I'm now really obsessed with especially my reactionary clients, my clients who react rather than respond, who can be cool as a cucumber in the office, but you put them in a car and they're like road racers because it's got to come out somewhere. Mm. And I'm like, you've got to move that diaphragm before you drive. Got to move it when you get home. 
you've got to be doing this all day long because your body needs it. Just because you feel okay in your mind and in your head, like I can handle this because you're so disciplined, your body actually can't in your nervous system. You've mm -hmm. got to move that. When I understood cortisol as a thing that I've overproduced, that is waking me up at 4 a.m. because my liver's cleaning it out with adrenaline, I was like, oh, I've got to help my body. I've got to give it a chance. When I do it myself and I see the reactions and then I teach my clients, I'm like, oh my God, they're sleeping through the night. This yeah. actually does work. Because you don't hear about this in Western medicine and you start to see it with all your clients. You're like, yes, results. I want everyone to sleep through the night and have seven hours sleep. It's yeah. wildly amazing when you can take someone who can't sleep and get them to a place where they're sleeping for five hours, six hours. And once they hit seven hours, you're like, that's a different person. That's an extra three hours sleep a night. I mean, your brain and your body need sleep to regenerate, to rejuvenate detoxify. for the day, to yeah. detoxify. There's so many things that happen while we're sleeping. And if you're not getting a good night's sleep and that's consecutively happening, I know how it feels like if I have just not gotten the right amount of sleep for a few nights in a row, how that feels and how that affects everything. But I want to take like kind of a zoom out a little bit and just talk about what are you seeing now? So you work with these professional, mostly women, you work with professional women, you work with achieving women a lot of times. What are you seeing as a common thread or is there some sort of message that you're receiving right now about what people are needing, what people are going through? Where do you take that question? What are people going through? We're all going through the same stuff. I think anywhere in the world, we're in one bucket and we're all trying to figure our way out of the bucket. I actually don't think it's any better outside of the bucket, by the way, but we're in this horrible delusion where we're like, you gotta get out of this bucket. But actually, if we all just sat still and held our hands in the bucket, we'd mm -hmm. be a lot happier. So I guess we actually did touch on this before we started recording, but the idea of being able to be still and hear yourself with all of the disruption right now. Obviously, we've just had an election in the UK. We've got an election here. There is turbulence all over the world with our political systems, everybody's individual political systems. This is not a time to be noisy. I love manifesting. People come to me to manifest. But for the last year and a bit, it's just not been a time to manifest big goals. This is a time to like be in your nest and feel good every day despite the challenges. And I would say that that's definitely a running theme. A lot of my clients want peace, which isn't that much of a weird thing for someone who does a holistic practice, but they are really like, what do I need to change about my habits and behaviors? And I'd say that that's probably new as well, because I don't think people were really looking to change their inner wiring, especially successful people. Yeah, I feel like, and we touched on this before we started recording too, I feel like we're going through a cosmic evolution right now. For you sure. were calling out the astrology that is coming up, the shifts that are happening. I've talked on this show about the shift in 2027 that the founder of human design says is coming. It is happening, the effects. Everybody has differing opinions on what it will mean for everybody. But we are being called to something different. We are seeing the things that we used to rely on that felt very sure and secure and like this is how it is, that we're starting to question those things and some of those systems and infrastructures and things are falling apart or being reorganized and being rethought or being challenged for the first time in some of our lives and most of our lives. But I do feel like there was a tool set that everybody felt very comfortable with in the generations past. Hard work, education, grit, hustle. And now I feel like we are being called to a new toolkit. There's something intuitively that people know. And I think what I see is people know that this is what they need, but there can be a little bit of trouble trusting that this will get them what they want because they're still pretty attached to what it is that they want to create, what it is that they want to have. But they know there is a calling to, I know there's something in me that needs to change. Not that I'm broken, but that I can't move on like this. This vehicle cannot function like this anymore. I know I felt and I still feel it, but I've been doing the work for years now. So I feel like I'm on the train already. But I see people now constantly coming and they resist doing the work. They know that they have to, but it's very uncomfortable. It's causing you to value and honor things that we've been sweeping under the rug for a really long time. 
I mean, it dropped the mic moment there, Nicole. You are spot on. And I agree, people don't know where this is going and what this means, but they understand that it's coming. And we're also a fear-based society. So people are not going to embrace this wholeheartedly because actually we're very comfortable with fear. We're very comfortable (laughs) with being scared. It's probably a more comforting thought to just do nothing rather than to do what we've done, which is embrace the change and figure it out and be on the train and take the awakening head on. And, you know, some people are going to look at you like you're crazy. I know that a lot of people in my life looked at me like, what are you doing with all your weird stuff that you're doing? And for a long time, I wasn't sure when I first started. It was like, I know I'm supposed to do this, but I don't know if this is going to give me what I want. I don't know if this is going to get me like there's still that fear. But the surrender is to say that if I do what intuitively feels right, I will get what I asked for or better, (laughs) this or something better. That's the level of trust that I think we're being called to now is that we are the priority, that our bodies, our energy is more important. We're being called to play a different game now. It isn't the skills game that we've all been playing. And if we go to that cross of the sleeping phoenix human design shift that's coming, we've all been under this cross of planning which is about tribalism, which is about planning, which is about skills, which is about focus and concentration on building the right things to take care of the tribe. Like that's the overall theme of it, taking lots and lots of action. And then we're shifting into a very individual theme of the cross of the sleeping phoenix, which is about intimacy, a new connection with abundance, which is a spiritual level of abundance that is highly individual in nature and to value ourselves and to look at the individual as something other than a piece of the tribe and say, I see a lot of families not going the traditional route now. I see a lot of things sort of pulling apart. And there's a lot of people that I think get fatalistic about this and think that, you know, society is crumbling. But we could look at it that way. I don't. I look at it maybe where we're able to look at ourselves and say, I matter in a new way, more so than this other stuff that we've been taught to value for so long. And it doesn't mean that that stuff was wrong. It was fine for the time, but maybe there's a new time coming. And I think that that's a message that I've been receiving a lot lately. I fully agree. I feel that in my body. Before we got on and we were just catching up and I was saying, I've gone from this idea of globalization to just localization and just wanting to be with my small comfortable goals and Mm. feeling so good about that but there's still a disparity though because as much as I feel good about that I do look out in the world and I'm like oh the world wants me to manifest a Maserati and (laughs) And a big house in the hills. That just doesn't feel very good in my nervous system. And look, it's not to say that if you turned around and said, would you like the Maserati and the big house in the hills, I would absolutely take it. But understanding what I have to do in our current system to have that manifestation, I'm like, no thanks. thanks. And I've really got to urge my clients to not, like, there are just things that are more important. There are other ways to feel abundant. And I do think if you start to feel... If you embody abundance, that stuff comes to you, that law of attraction idea of just it. And it does. But I love what you're saying. I didn't realize that human design was feeling all the things and like giving it such tangible. That's so interesting because astrology says by 2027, we're all going to be thriving. But it sounds like we're still going to be in the mix a little bit in February 27th for human design. I mean, I think that these things, like anything, the change is happening. We're moving toward something now. It's coming. So you start to feel the pull of it. And it's not one day you were 100% one thing and the next day you're 100% the other. No, We're feeling that change. We're feeling that shift. It's just there's going to be one day where we're going to be more on that side than we are on this side. But I think we're absolutely feeling that now. I think that we're setting the table for this new dinner that is going to be served. And I think that what's on the menu is a regulated nervous system. It is openness. It is energetic connection versus pure hustle, more flow. And that's not lip service to say that we shouldn't be working. There's a balance of masculine and feminine and everything. But I think there's going to be a greater burden on us to be open 
that we won't be able to rely on that stuff. I think we're already seeing that. I see that with my clients that, you know, I have a lot of hustlers, reformed hustlers in my programs and in my world at various level of success. And what they're all finding is either they don't have the desire to continue that way anymore or it's not working like it used to. It doesn't work anymore. I really think that COVID was a big reset for that energetic trait. It just really removed it. I think people that came back from COVID and were like, I'm going to hustle to make the things. Mm -hmm. Everybody had an energetic reset and being confronted with a hustler is like, oh, it really is. I just feel exhausted with my very productive friends. <laughs> let alone with someone that wants to hustle their way to the top. Can't you just rest on your smarts? I want to say, hand on my heart, that hustle culture is dead. It is dead in the water. If that is your thing, you need to relearn wherever that habit and that trait came from because it's unhealthy. Put it to bed because we don't need to have one hustler at the top making everybody else feel and it isn't you're right it's not happening there's a big thing in the uk i'm not going to mention the person's name because he's a very famous podcaster uh -huh. he's definitely on the dragon's den in the uk anyway all the press at the moment is how everyone who's gen z is anti him because he's hustle culture and that there are like slight discrepancies in his cv in his resume mm because he was hustling. So he sort of flowered things to make mm -hmm. it sound a certain way in order to get to the top. And I'm not saying that he hasn't done good things once he's got there or invested in great ideas and helped people. But the inauthenticity of his exchange of energy to get there mm -hmm. is repugnant to people. And I'm really happy about that. I'm really happy that we are finally opening up and being like, we can applaud him for doing it, but we can also say no one else needs to do that anymore. You can get there without needing to do that. A hundred percent. And I think just to bring this back to human design for a second, because we talk about hustle, the generators are the ones that have the ability to hustle. However, projectors and the non-sacrals can be the most conditioned hustlers because they're taking in all that sacral energy and they don't know when to turn it off. We have a mechanism that says like, I'm done. Whether we listen to it or not is different. But I think that one of the things about human design and these modalities and clearing out your nervous system and coming from a place of real alignment is that you can say, what does my version of flow look like? I'm a busy flow person. I need to be doing stuff. I need to be active. I need to be working. I like to work. I just don't want to work all the time. And it's what drives me to work. I'm driven by what I want to do, what I want to create, the vision that I have, and doing the work that really feels like it lights me up versus feeling like I'm running out of time. I have to do these things. A coach told me it should be this way. It's the come from. It comes from a place of alignment. So I think that's the new vibe is being driven by the things that are true to you that are really in alignment with what your intuition is. And one of the things that I have the, I don't want to say the hardest time, but one of the things that's consistently we're coming back to in my containers and certainly in my business by design mentorship is getting the generators to wait in between responses. Everybody has their different way of burning out projectors think that they need to keep up. So they're always feeling like I've got to do more and they feel like hell because they're tired and they don't want to do it that way. Manifestors are abdicating their authority and doing what other people tell them they need to do or they're asking people. And it's like, you don't ask anybody. You don't outsource your power to anyone. And generators, we're constantly just going and wondering, was this a response? Was this a response? Do I need to do this? Do I need to do this? And yeah. we have the energy to burn, it feels like. So we do. And getting them to slow down to say, like, is this really a response? Is this really coming up from a place of you wanting to do this? Or do you just think you should? Mm. Or are you just trying to relieve the pressure? Or are you just trying to be sure of something? Or is this just so emotionally uncomfortable for you that you're running away from it? To start to be able to observe that in real time. I would say, like, I can't guarantee you there will be no walls, but I'll teach you how to kick them down. And we kick them down with the nervous system regulation. We kick them down with things like breath work and EFT, that we're able to see those moments of stress and go into them in a therapeutic way, diffuse them, release them from our body, 
and then you get to move on. Then it's very interesting to see what you actually really do want to do and what you don't want to do when you're not being forced to out of pure pressure from the outside world. I was actually reading yesterday about EFT and they were talking about taking your response from a 10 to a 2 mm -hmm. and keeping it at a 2 until you understand how you can use that deficit of 8 for something that feels empowering to you. Because it was more about like channeling anger and rage mm -hmm. and what are you really raging at, which is kind of the same thing that you're saying, like what do you really need to respond to? And responding at the, two, the level of two, keeping that extra eight so that when you understand where the flow is, you can get that eight behind you and like fly fly at whatever the cause, the situation, whatever it feels empowering or is empowering. Yeah. The analogy that I always give is that all emotions and everything that you feel is necessary. Like we need anger. We're never going to get rid of anger. You don't want to get rid of anger because anger can be fuel for other things. Anger can be the thing that protects you from other people. There are lots of uses for it, but I look at it like we're the coach of the team and we can't have players running out and calling the shots. They have to be working on the team. So that's yeah. how I look at EFT is, well, by working through it and looking at these, honoring the emotion that we're having, let me honor the anger. So anger doesn't feel like it needs to run rogue and get itself out on random things that I have no control over because it feels stifled right? because I'm trying to stuff it down or just letting it go crazy. But to say like, hey, I hear you. I see you. I get it. But mm. you got to trust me on this. And then I personify everything. It's like anger looks at me and says like, all right, all right, I trust you, coach. And then it sits on the bench until I'm ready to call it up. That's power to me. A hundred percent. I can't remember where I got this from. I know it was from a book I read a long time ago, but it talked about having a container, like a physical container mm -hmm. for your emotions. And I would have been quite deep into my career in the music industry when I read this. And I was like, why has no one ever told me? to put my emotions into a container. Because just that visualization, which is the same as you having your bench, when you can feel or see, and it's not just something that's happening to you, it's happening for you, it gave me such strength in that moment. And it really did change. You know, I felt angry a lot of the times. I felt undervalued. It really changed that anger to courage, constructive emotions, mm -hmm. as opposed to the awful thing that happens to anger when it has nowhere to go as it becomes depression, because it literally gets depressed, which is another thing. Why did nobody ever tell me that depressed? It's like flattened. Do you yeah. think of it as like someone who's sad and you create all these other ways to understand that word? But it's like, why didn't anyone just tell me to understand that literally depressed? Mm -hmm. It's flattened. It's given nowhere to go. And you've just got to keep finding your ways of understanding. I know that we talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but when we were talking, when we were catching up, I do think that there is a lot of energy coming in now. Like you said, we're setting this table and it's going to be so important to not be a victim to your emotions, mm -hmm. to either be in control of them if you can get to that stage or to at least be in co-creation with your emotions. I think as women, we can get overwhelmed because we're taught or we're conditioned at a young age to really not honor how we feel. But I think the best way of dealing with all the things that are coming is to really understand, however you call it, emotion, energy, and to be in partnership with them. A thousand percent. I feel like we're being called to personal power. And that's a phrase that gets thrown around a lot. But to me, personal power is you being able to stand with all of those emotions behind you, not in a box, not behind a glass wall, but standing there waiting to be called upon when they're needed. And to know that you have the ability to do that and you have the control to call them up or put them back on the bench. That to me is what power is all about, to be able to be whole, to stand there with all of it and choose what comes out rather than it choosing and you having no control because you haven't looked at any of this. You're pretending like it's not there. And that I feel like is what's ending, that need for us to feel like, oh, well, everything's fine. Nope, everything is fine. Oh, well, I'm good. Good. Great. Not. <laughs> and the truth is not great. Not great at all. And sometimes we're not even admitting it to ourselves. And I feel like those are the people who struggle and who will continue to struggle more. 
because there are things that are calling us to bring that stuff out. Well, thank you so much for being here. I love this conversation. I always love talking to you. I love the perspective that you bring, particularly to this type of conversation and the work that you do. Like I said, I love your breath works. I think that you do amazing, amazing sessions. The music that you choose, the right level of cueing and where it's not <laughs> overwhelming your mind hearing someone talk to you the whole time. It's really beautifully done and orchestrated. So where can people learn more about you, stay in touch with you and learn more about what you do? Oh, thank you for asking. There are two places, my website, there you'll find links to either, I do quarterly free vibe checks. If you ever just want to like get in, have a quick breath work, talk to me about your energy. So have a look on my website. They come up from every sort of 12 weeks and there you'll also find stuff about my membership. But if you want free resources, my Instagram is really the place to go, Spiritual Mixtape. And I wouldn't say daily, but three to five times a week, you'll find an energy update, which is a funny way of reading what's happening. Some will resonate. Some will like deeply hit you and you're like, oh God, that's me. And it's always nice when it's like the fun ones and some won't. That's Mm -hmm. okay. And yeah, I've got a free angel numbers guide as well, which I'd love you to download. It's completely free. And the thing I love about angel numbers is it's a gateway to opening up onto the spiritual platform because again, it's fun. It's very fun and lighthearted. And once you start noticing number sequences, they start appearing everywhere. And you're like, wait, I feel like I'm in a Woody Allen film. Let me start figuring out what this hidden message is that's like talking to me here. And it really is the first throes of being in this kind of secret conversation with the universe. So I hope that that brings you comfort and joy. And yeah, I hope that answered your question. Yes, we will link all of that up in the show notes for you. So she has a wonderful podcast called Spiritual Mixtape. Her website is spiritualmixtape.com. I got you, girl. I got you. Her Instagram is at spiritual mixtape. So she's made it very easy for you. Spiritual mixtape is the vibe, is the thing. So go to the website, go to the Instagram, go to the podcast, look that up in any of those places and you will find Daisy. And we will link all of this up, including the link to the angel numbers guide in the show notes for you. So just drop down there and click the link and we'll take you over to any of those places we got you covered. So thank you, Daisy, for being here. I always love talking to you. I love the perspective that you bring. I love the energy updates that you do on Instagram. I'm always interested in seeing them and I love when they pop up in my feed. Please go and follow her and listen to her show. I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And remember, in order to have an unshakable business, you must first become an unshakable human. So thanks for letting us help you become unshakable with human design, everybody. We'll see you next time. If you love this episode and you're a fan of the show, please show us the love on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to the show and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with other entrepreneurs on their human design journey, join our free Facebook community, Human Design for Entrepreneurs. Go to nicolelano.me forward slash podcast links to join the group, book a human design reading with me, or access our free human design resources. We'll see you there.